Hi, my name is Nico Carboni and I'm a biochemistry major here at Florida State. My goal is to go into pharmacology and hopefully work in rational drug design as my career. For that reason, the STEM topic I chose to discuss for my application is drugs. So there's actually a lot to be said about drugs, but most notably there have been a lot of recent cases involving unwarranted and uncalled for drug addiction due to opioids in states like Oklahoma, which led to a huge Supreme Court case and Big Pharma taking big blows to the industry. What this leads me to ultimately is Big Pharma, possibly one of the biggest problems we face nowadays as a nation. So just to give a little bit of context about the situation, um, the current Supreme Court case that ties in very closely with this is Oklahoma versus Johnson & Johnson. Johnson & Johnson is a US-based pharmaceutical and healthcare company involved in an opioid scandal in the US. And actually New York Times author Jan Hoffman writes, 18 million opioid prescriptions were written in a state with a population of 3.9 million. So objectively, this already presents an outrageous fallacy. Prescriptions were given out for more than four times the number of people that even resided in the states. So this goes to show the extent to which the population was actually addicted to opioids. Once the facts were published, it was shocking to see, but in the present, this large-scale addiction was likely much less obvious. The arguments being presented on the state side focused on how Johnson & Johnson intentionally marketed their, opio their opioids as being less severe not as severe as they really are, in the sense that it would actually lead to addiction. Um, and because of this, doctors and physicians were convinced of the safety and effectiveness of these drugs, making them much more likely to start patients on a, on a prescription for them. So once patients started on this path, they became increasingly attached and essentially hooked to the drugs and developed a dependence on them. So in the final verdict of the trial, the judge actually ruled Johnson & Johnson would have to pay over half a million dollars in settlement, which is much less than the projected $17 million would be. This money, however, should provide a year's a year's worth of services to help deal with the opioid crisis in Oklahoma. So in general, the outcome of this is that to some extent at least, Big Pharma is starting to take blame and taking responsibility for their marketing and bad intentions. But I think overall, um, what we can take out of this, the bigger outcome is really the leniency with, with which this verdict was given. Because originally a 20 year plan to remediate the effects of this opioid epidemic had been proposed with a $17 billion settlement. But from that $17 billion, it ended up being pared down to only $572 million that Johnson & Johnson would have to pay. So this in and of itself already shows the extent to which Big Pharma has influence over our country and over even the Supreme Court. In addition, studies examined by Professors Light and Lexgen show that between 1974 and 1994, only 11% of all new marketed drugs were actually innovative in any pharmacological way. Moreover, since the mid-1990s, over 85% of all new drugs marketed worldwide provided slim to no clinical advantages to patients. What this means is that only 15% of all drugs since 1990 actually provided any sort of clinical advantage, and that's just crazy. And I think the biggest driving factor behind that is the moral values and the ethical values with which Big Pharma operates. Big Pharma claims to have really costly and ineffective research and development, but in reality, from 1995 to 2010, Big Pharma profits actually increase six times as much as the cost of research and development. So what this really shows is that profits have come in sixfold despite this. And the fact that only a mere 15% of new marketed drugs provided any sort of advancement in medicine shows that, a fo that the focus is not going into searching for new drugs, rather variations of existing drugs are only being made, which doesn't help in any sort of way new diseases. So how this ties into my career and what I want to do is that I want to break away from this moral and ethical cycle of only caring for profits. I want to work for a genuine firm interested in helping people and developing drugs to counteract future diseases. I want to be at the forefront of my field and do my best to develop and help synthesize new drugs that are both clinically and pharmacologically advanced.